So when doing my recent latitude test of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, I came across something very interesting. So when doing the test, I brought back all the over and underexposed shots to the neutral exposure, and I did that using the Camera Raw tab. But I was wondering how the test would have panned out if I shot ProRes instead, since I couldn't use the Camera Raw tab. So just for fun, I tried to correct exposure using the offset and the lift gamma gain controls, but I couldn't get the same results. So I then thought of using the ACES color space instead. And for those of you who don't know what ACES is, it stands for Academy Color Encoding System. ACES is a color system and a color space developed by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. It was developed in collaboration with lots of professionals and is looking to become the industry standard for color grading and color encoding. If you have DaVinci Resolve installed on your system, you actually have ACES already at your disposal. If you open up Resolve and go to your product settings, under the Color Management tab, you can select your color and science that you wish to work in. In here you can actually choose to use ACES. There's two different versions, ACES CC and ACES CCT. I generally go with ACES CC. And then use the newest version, in this case 1.1. Then you can choose ACES Output Device Transform, which is the color space you want to output to. Normally this would be Rec. 709. If you're just using one camera you can also choose a input device here, but if you're using multiple cameras you can do it at the clip level as well. So if you right click on a clip, you get the option to choose a ACES input transform. And here you choose the camera that you use to capture this footage. If your clip is in RAW however, Resolve will recognize the gamma and color space automatically, so you don't have to enter any input transform device. And to test this I have a very underexposed shot here we can basically just see the outline of my head. If we start with the regular color science of DaVinci Resolve and just start by moving the offset wheel up and down, you can see on the waveform that all we're doing is essentially just offsetting the exposure. The shadows and the highlights are moving exactly the same amount, we're just offsetting everything. But if the clip would have been shot in RAW, like this, for example, we can use the camera raw tab instead, which behaves very, very differently. If we change the exposure here, you can see on the waveform that it behaves very, very differently compared to the offset wheel. The black point is staying at the same level. It behaves more like just adjusting the ISO than actually just offsetting the entire waveform. But so far, we've just been looking at the waveform for the log image. And when using ACES, what you're seeing is a transform at the end back to Rec. 709. So to make it even, let's transform the log image to a Rec. 709 with a node at the end. So now the waveform shows us an image that has been converted to Rec. 709. So if we use the offset wheel now, it will behave differently than just looking at the log image. But it still doesn't really look like the raw tab and we can't really bring back that much detail, we're just lifting everything. The detail that is crushed is still crushed. So let's try ACES instead. So I'll go into my product settings and then under color management I'll change it to ACES CC and then I've already set the input transform to Blackmagic Design Film and the output device transform to Rec. 709. Now I'll just reset this node. And now we're using ACES. What happens if we use the offset wheel now? Well, it looks a lot more like the camera raw tab. Very, very similar. So I have two clips here on my timeline. Both are shot on the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, one shot in ProRes 42 HQ, and one shot in Cinema GNG RAW. For the RAW clip I can still use the RAW settings in DaVinci Resolve, 
So let's go in here and bump the exposure to the maximum of five stops. And this is what we got to work with. Let's see how close we can get with the non-raw clip by just using the offset wheel. So if I go here to the split screen and then use a selected clip, I can get them up both at the same time side by side. So since we're now in Aces, let's try to just use the offset wheel and see if we can match these clips. So I'm just looking at the waveform here initially. So judging by the waveform, somewhere around here seems to be a pretty good match. And I'll put them up on the screen now so you can see more clearly what we're actually doing here. And perhaps those shots were a bit too underexposed to really see the difference in how much detail we can bring back. So here's one shot that instead is one stop less underexposed. And we'll do the same thing. We'll go into the raw tab and then bump the exposure by five stops. As you can see, we bring back a lot of information and especially here on our subject, which is me in this case. You can see my right eye, my ear, my jawline, information that previously seemed to be gone. But what happens if we go to the ProRes shot instead? Again I'll bring them up so I have them side by side. And then just using the offset wheel I'll match the exposure. And somewhere around here seems to be correct. And as you can see here, a lot of information was brought back. Very, very similar to the raw image. And the weird artifacts we're seeing here seems to be with the split screen function and not the actual clip. If we disable the split screen function and look at just the raw clip, none of those artifacts are still there. If we toggle between the raw and the progress clip, you can see we brought back pretty much same amount of information. And once again, just to demonstrate the point, I'll try to do the same by using the regular color science in DaVinci Resolve. I'll change back from ASUS to DaVinci YRGB. And then let's try and match these two shots. And as you can see, I can get them to match quite well. Of course, I can get it to match even better if I spend some more time on it. And we get, and we do get information back in my face, but it was quite a bit more hassle to get it to match perfectly. When using Aces, we just had to bump the offset and that's it. So if you like to correct exposure using the raw settings in DaVinci Resolve, ACES will mimic that behavior much better than the regular DaVinci Resolve color science. Obviously the information we get back at this point is very very noisy, but I still think it's interesting to see how differently ACES behaves compared to the regular color science in DaVinci Resolve. It behaves more like RAW, and the way you can correct for exposure reminds me more of the camera RAW tab in DaVinci Resolve than the offset wheel. But you don't have to change your entire project to ACES to be able to use it. You can actually use ACES in the nodes as well. So if you set up a first node and add the OpenFX plugin ACES Transform and choose your input transform device and then an output transform, uh, possibly ACES CC, and then you add a second node with ACES CC as an input transform and then an output transform. Uh, preferably as Rec 709. Any node you put in between those two nodes will be in ACES and you can then correct the exposure just the same way you would as if the entire project was in ACES. And if you're interested in ACES as a whole, please let me know and I'll try to dig deeper and do more videos on ACES and all of its benefits.
But that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and I'll see you next time.